Chapter 31 Trust you are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 31 Trust Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Zhao Yu was a spoilt brat but she was only 15 years old, still just a child. Zhao Yu, your earlier words caused a dent to my reputation. Let me warn you, please stop your behavior of infringing on my personal rights. If not, I can sue you for slander. You are not of legal age, but you are already 16 this year. The country's law is that anyone 16 years or above can be legally charged. Are you prepared to be sued by me? Me, what crime have I committed? Zhao Yu was stupefied, she had merely stated a few facts, at most they were just gossip about Xiao Nan. What did that have to do with committing a crime? Don't you feel ashamed that you don't even know that you've committed a crime? Don't tell me that you think you don't need to be responsible for what you said. Xiao Nan rolled her eyes. If you have nothing better to do, please read more books on politics. We are already in secondary three, there's a lot of law information in those books. Moreover, you are a high school student, don't act like a moron about law. Threatened by Xiao Nan, Zhao Yu was really scared, she started to flip the pages of this year's newly issued politics textbook. True enough, there was a lot of law-related knowledge in the textbook. Although there was no mention of slander in the book, she thought about the look of a conviction on Xiao Nan's face when she had said those words, and did not dare to gossip about Xiao Nan anymore. The rest of the classmates had ears for themselves. They clearly heard Xiao Nan and Zhao Yu's argument. Initially, when everyone heard that Xiao Nan scored full marks because she cheated, they felt that it was unfair. Why should someone who cheated on the exam receive the best grade for an individual subject? But everyone did not have that deep an enmity with Xiao Nan. Besides, this was ultimately a rumor which had just started today, not everyone believed this. Not long after, a girl came over and sat beside Xiao Nan. Xiao Nan, do you know why Zhao Yu said that about you just now? Why? Previously, Zhao Yu just sounded like sour grapes. Someone has been spreading that you are close to a group of hooligans, those hooligans were bad and did not have clean hands and feet, they climbed into the school to steal things before. So someone said that your English grades were so good because the hooligans helped you to steal the test papers prior to the exam, that is why you scored full marks. Since when was she close to hooligans? It's ridiculous that people believe in such baseless rumors. Xiao Nan was shaking her head. Don't talk about the rest, if I had the means to get the test papers, why did I score 85 marks for Chinese and maths? Put aside maths, the marks deducted for my Chinese test were those that required memorizing. Upon hearing what Xiao Nan said, her classmates felt that she had a point. True, since she was stealing, why would they steal for one subject and not all? That Chinese paper of Xiao Nan, which teacher Li was so angry about, all of the 14 marks were content that required memorizing. In the whole class, except for Xiao Nan who scored 0 out of 14 marks, even the slower ones could get around 7 or 8 marks. The first thing that needed to be done after receiving the test paper was to find the answer and memorize them. Based on her results, it was illogical that she had cheated. True, I did not believe. That girl's face turned slightly red after hearing Xiao Nan. Xiao Nan replied with only laughter. Was the girl being nice by clearing her doubts or trying to gather more information? As an adult, she was not oblivious. If she really did not believe the rumor, why was she embarrassed? Xiao Nan laughed. The other party seemed to know that she did not get what she expected and felt self-conscious, so she quickly returned to her own seat. When peace resumed, Xiao Nan could not help thinking, who was the one who could not see eye to eye with her, who went around spreading such ridiculous rumors. Hooligans. Thinking about what happened throughout her aggregated two lifetimes, Xiao Nan recalled one matter. This happened recently, it was yesterday. Yesterday, she saw a group of people surrounding, beating up and scolding a person. She directly found the policeman and saved the person. 
was it because of this? While reading her book, Zhao Yu, whose mind was floating elsewhere, stole a glance at Xiao Nan. Actually the mastermind of the rumors about Xiao Nan was not anyone else, it was none other than Zhao Yu. However, Zhao Yu's initial version of the rumor was not the same. Yesterday, Zhao Yu looked for Teacher Li to request Teacher Li's guidance on her essay. Hence, Zhao Yu left school late, slightly later than Xiao Nan. The two of them headed home in the same direction, they had to pass the same main road. As she felt awkward, Zhao Yu would rather slowly follow behind Xiao Nan's back than to catch up with Xiao Nan to go home together. Upon reaching the quad, Xiao Nan changed her direction as she wanted to go to the residence of the Zhai family. Zhao Yu, who followed behind, saw that something was amiss. Xiao Nan should not be heading home in that direction. Where was she going? Out of curiosity, Zhao Yu decided to tail her after much consideration. When Zhao Yu caught up with Xiao Nan, it was at the time when Xiao Nan brought the police to save the person. Zhao Yu did not see anything else, she only saw Xiao Nan running towards that group of hooligans. The hooligans had sticks in their hands and blood on their bodies. At the sight, Zhao Yu was scared out of her wits. Carrying her school bag, she ran all the way home. When Zhao Yu reached home, her heart was still pounding loudly. When the neighbor's children came to look for her to study together, Zhao Yu could not help but mention this matter, and told them she wondered when Xiao Nan had gone astray, she was even in such a good relationship with the punks. When the neighbor's children confirmed the identity of the few hooligans, they unintentionally revealed one matter. It was those people who came to our school during the summer vacation to steal things. If Xiao Nan is close to them, she will certainly be able to top the class every year. Rumors are always spread the wrong way. The most recent version that was spread to the school was that Xiao Nan had always scored well in her exams because she relied on this group of hooligans to help her steal the test papers. Xiao Nan was a good student, that I dot catching name made it impossible for people in the school to not know her. When there's suddenly a scandal related to a model student, the speed of the news spreading was faster than that of the light. Xiao Nan, teacher Chen requested that you go to his office. The class's maths representative said after he returned from teacher's Chen's office, where he sent the homework to. Zhao Yu laughed. Still not admitting, even teacher Chen summoned her for a talk, perhaps her parents will be called next. I've been Xiao Nan's classmate for several years, I don't believe she is such a person. The student who was seated at the same desk as Zhao Yu started to be argue with her again. Zhou Lei, what is your problem, why are you always putting in good words for Xiao Nan, what benefit did you receive from Xiao Nan? Zhou Lei was the class's sports representative. Lean and energetic, he was certainly good at sports, especially basketball. His three-dot-point shots were amazing. Ten years later, this was a full dot grown little basketball prince who would make the young lady's hearts throb. Chapter 32 Is she the biological child? You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Chapter 32 Is she the biological child? Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Most of the junior high school students would begin to develop feelings for the opposite gender. Zhou Lei was good looking, good in sports and above. Average in studies. Zhao Yu was proud to be deskmates with such an outstanding boy. But when Zhou Lei went against her to speak up for Xiao Nan, Zhao Yu's mood was not good. Zhou Lei looked at Zhou Yu with some disdain. I should be asking you this question. Xiao Nan did not offend you, why do you dislike her? Are you happy to gossip about Xiao Nan? Will you gain anything because of this? I really don't know what you girls are thinking. If you think Xiao Nan's language grades are better than yours, then score better than her next time. Don't you think it's ugly to gossip? Zhou Lei, you, you side with Xiao Nan so much, do you like Xiao Nan? Zhao Yu's face turned red with anger. Are you crazy? Zhou Lei rolled his eyes at Zhao Yu, and was not willing to talk to Zhao Yu anymore. Xiao Nan did not know that, after she left, Zhao Yu and Zhou Lei, 
the pair of desk mates, had argued with each other because of her. She gained all the teacher's attention once she stepped into the office. Teacher Chen. Xiao Nan, you're here, stand slightly nearer. There was a stool next to Teacher Chen. It was for Xiao Nan to sit on. Xiao Nan sat down. After thinking, she had the feeling that, most likely, Teach Chen had called her in because of the matter that was mentioned by Zhao Yu minutes ago. Xiao Nan, have any delinquent teenagers been pestering you lately, asking you for money? After hearing Teacher Chen's words, Xiao Nan breathed a sigh of relief and felt much better. This was because she knew that Teacher Chen question implied that he trusted her. Xiao Nan shook her head. Thereafter, she told Teacher Chen what happened yesterday. I don't know those people. It was so serious. Teacher Chen was shocked. Then the man who was beaten up. Do you know him? No, the man who was beaten, his face was swollen and covered in blood. I don't know who he is either. At the thought of the pitiful look of the beaten man, Xiao Nan shivered. Gee. When the other teachers in the office heard this, they were shocked too. These hooligans were too merciless. If not for Xiao Nan who had sought the help of adults, the man could have lost his life. Teacher Chen was slightly undecided. He was not sure whether to commend Xiao Nan for her bravery in helping others in need, or reprimand her for her boldness and disregard for her own safety. A group of punks were fighting and a young lady, who had no means of defending herself, dared to run there to interfere in the commotion. She had too much bravery. Teacher Chen, Xiao Nan did the right thing for this matter. She was smart and not impulsive, didn't she look for someone to help? On the other hand, the rest of the teachers in the office was impressed by the way Xiao Nan handled the situation. She not only protected herself, but also saved someone. There was nothing wrong with it. If Xiao Nan had ran up on her own to to shout at them, then she deserved to be criticized. Teacher Chen snorted, she would dote on her own students. What happened to the man? The policeman brought him to the hospital. True, you can go, you don't need to worry about the rumors in the school, I will help you to find a way out. Okay. With Teacher Chen's absolute trust in her, now, Xiao Nan did not care about the rumors at all. It did not matter what others said. When the secondary three students saw Xiao Nan coming back from Teacher Chen's office, she did not hide. Instead, she looked bright and cheery, and had a gentle smile on her face. Judging by this, Xiao Nan did not seem to have received a scolding from Teacher Chen. For today's maths lesson, Teacher Chen solemnly and carefully used the first minute of the lesson to address the matter regarding Xiao Nan. All of you are junior high school students, you have the ability to differentiate right from wrong. I hope that you will not be fooled by a few rumors. We are a team. We should be united. I trust my students and you should trust your classmates too. As to the rumors spread by other classes, I will think of a way to resolve this later. But I do not wish to see our class having problems and having an internal conflict. Do you understand? Understood. Although teacher did not specify Xiao Nan's name, everyone knew what matter she was referring to. Teacher Chen had made her stand. The whole class had dispelled their suspicions of Xiao Nan. In the school, it was a very serious offense to steal the exam papers. The rumors about Xiao Nan were passed on for a day and the school did not take any action. On the contrary, it was a quiet week. Within a short five and a half days time, the rumors about Xiao Nan had almost died down in the school. It was quiet at school, but not at home. Somehow, Xiao Zijin, who was in the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China, got to know about this rumor. Xiao Zijin reached home later than Xiao Nan. Upon reaching home, she started to scold Xiao Nan from the bottom of her heart as soon as she put down her school bag. Nan Nan, even if you wish to study that much, you shouldn't do this sort of thing. If you explain nicely to dad and mom, can they disallow? Dad and mom do not expect us to be very successful, but we need to be down dot to dot earth, and do the right things. 
the cunning tricks you played, in exchange for the grades, are only short.lived. Can they last forever? You can do that for now, but when you reach the middle school exam, do you think you can still use this scrupulous way? For middle school exams, can you still do this? When she was scolded by Chiao Zijin, Chiao Nan took a step back. Her face was cold. With disdain, she lifted her hands towards her face and wiped it once. Chiao Zijin had sprayed her saliva all over Chiao Nan's face. Wasn't that dirty? Zijin, what happened? At the sight of the elder daughter being furious, Ding Jiai quickly asked. Dad and Mom, you don't know the matter about Chiao Nan, she made all of us lose face. My grades are not excellent but they are not that bad either. I think a person should be honest and know their own ability. A man must be true to himself. But Chiao Nan. In order to produce good grades, she actually befriended those people of dodgy background in the society, and let them steal the exam papers for her. My heart sinks at the thought of this. Thinking that Xiao Nan had relied on this method to score better than her over the years, Xiao Zijin was in a rage. She really thought that Xiao Nan was smarter than her but actually, she had resorted to such tricks. Nan Nan, explain yourself. Because of you, mom and dad argued many times. You hardly anger mom, but because of you, mom was angered a few times this month. You are the child of mom and dad, they raised you. Do you still have a conscience? What, is there such a matter? Ding Jiayi immediately believed the words of the elder daughter. You little brute. Having said that, Ding Jiayi raised her hand towards Chiao Nan's face. Chiao Nan bent her head down, as agile as a monkey, she ran towards Chiao Dongliang and hid behind his back. The two of you are good, one is my real mother, and the other my real sister, you believe whatever the other said. You didn't even ask me, or allow me to explain. Dad, are they really my next dot of dot kin? Chapter 33 Broken Relationships You Are Listening at Novel Full Dot Audio Chapter 33 Broken Relationships Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios For a Moment Xiao Nan could not take it anymore, she asked this question from the bottom of her heart. Don't try anything funny. Xiao Dongliang shouted at Ding Jiayi and Xiao Zijin to stop. He was also shocked to hear Xiao Zijin's words, but Nan Nan's performance had always been consistent. He had never heard Zijin mention such matters, hence, those must be false rumors spread by others. Nan Nan, have you heard of it? Even the elder daughter heard it, it could not possibly be quiet at the younger daughter's school. Yes, because of this, teacher Chen specifically asked to see me in the office on Tuesday. But unlike mom and sister, when teacher Chen heard about this, he asked me if any delinquent teenagers have been pestering and blackmailing me. In other words, outsiders did not even believe that Xiao Nan would do such a dishonest thing. But Ding Jiayi and Xiao Zijin heard merely the slightest ruffle in the wind and said it as though it was real. Was that the expected behavior of your next dot of dot kin? Teacher Chen did not suspect you at all. Xiao Dongliang blinked. After all, when he first heard this, even he, the real dad, had a second of doubt. No, Xiao Nan shook her head. Teacher Chen even told the class straight, told my classmates to stop spreading such untrue rumors. So what exactly is going on here? Dad, I've been wrong till death regarding this matter. Except for this summer vacation where I could not revise at home, in the past, there wasn't once that I have not obediently stayed home and finished all the housework chores. Don't talk about being in contact with those hooligans, I don't even have time to read books, how I wish that there are 48 hours in a day. Chiao Nan's words startled the others. Whether Chiao Nan was busy in the past, Ding Jiayi knew best. When summer vacation came, Chiao Nan had little opportunity to go out. As Chiao Nan said, Ding Jiayi simply pushed all the household chores to Chiao Nan whenever Chiao Nan had the time. At most, Ding Jiayi prepared the meals. 
Every time Chiao Nan had some spare time and wanted to read books, Ding Jiayi would definitely find an excuse to make Chiao Nan work. So, 24 hours, besides sleeping for 8 to 9 hours in the bedroom, Chiao Nan was within Ding Jiayi's sight for the rest of the time. Chiao Nan simply did not have any chance to get to know those delinquent teens. Once again, Chiao Dongliang shocked by another truth. So, during summer vacation, when the younger daughter had spare time, she did all the household chores. Though it was not easy for Chiao Zijin to find fault with Chiao Nan, she would not give up. Don't tell me that this matter sprang out of nowhere. She did not believe it. If Chiao Nan had not done such a thing, then why would people spread the news with every detail vividly described? Nan Nan, what do you say? Chiao Dongliang looked at Chiao Nan. It made sense that no point one would be so free to make up a story without any facts, but he too believed that the younger daughter would not do such a thing. That's right, you have to explain this matter properly to us. If not, you don't need to study anymore, in case you go astray, Ding Jiayi added as she regained her senses. Regardless of the truth of the matter, this was a good chance. Old Xiao, I think you better listen to me, don't let Xiao Nan study anymore. Her character has gone astray with studies. We might as well let her work and let others watch over her, then she will not be able to mix with those bad guys anymore. The children of our Chiao family may not be the best in their studies but they cannot have a bad moral character. Mom, do you mean that, regardless of the truth of this matter, you won't let me go to school to prevent me from going astray, and let me go to work? Mom, I am puzzled, Dad's income is not considered little, it's enough to pay for both sisters and my education. Why do you have to insist that I work? as if our family does not have enough to meet our needs. Xiao Nan initially did not want to expose that Ding Jiayi had spent all the family savings because of Xiao Zijin. But Ding Jiayi kept using her education as a threat, Xiao Nan could not help it and had to reveal Ding Jiayi's secret. It was time to let her father know the special situation at home, rather than foolishly allowing her mother to cover up the whole matter. Dad, how much savings do we have? Mom can't wait for me to sacrifice my future, quit school and work. Dad, if there is really difficulty at home and you can't afford our tuition fees, even if sister's grades are not as good as mine, I will abide by mom's wishes. It is also a form of repayment to her for bringing me up. I will go to work. At last, Xiao Nan was forced to agree to quit school and work. But when she heard Xiao Nan's words, Xiao Zijin was furious. Dot what did she mean by even if her grades were not better than Xiao Nan, Xiao Nan was also willing to sacrifice herself. This meant that it was a waste of money to let her study. Do you not understand my words? Xiao Dongliang was also angry now. The younger daughter's grades were obviously much better than the elder daughter, on what basis must she discontinue her studies? You really think that joining the workforce early is a good thing? Fine, since Nan Nan is not studying despite her good grades, then there is no need for Zijin to study either. Both will go to work and earn money for you. Since taking up a job now is so promising, how can you forget Zijin? If you want to favor Nan Nan, you have to see if I agree to it. Xiao Dongliang was really furious. Ding had not figured out the bottom of the matter yet she had come back to talk nonsense and create a scene. The neighbors could almost hear them now. If not for Zijin's nonsense, why would old Ding dig up the old matters? Mom! Xiao Zijin was frightened. Why are you shouting? Character comes before studies. If Xiao Nan was as obedient as Zijin, would I need to be so concerned? Zijin does not mix with bad company and go astray, so I don't need to worry about her, so she doesn't need to go to work. Don't you know it varies from person to person? Ding Jiayi sided much with Xiao Zijin. Clearly it was unreasonable, yet she said it as though she had some point. Dad, actually when school started, teacher Chen asked me about something. Xiao Nan clenched her fists. What is it? Teacher Chen asked me. Sister's grades were obviously poor, 
so how did she get into the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China? The high school affiliated to Renmin University of China, isn't it the Ping Ching High School? Both daughters' matters were taken care of by Ding Jiai, Xiao Dongliang had only begun to interfere recently. He vaguely remembered that the elder daughter's grades were not good, it did not meet the admission score for the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China, but could get into Ping Ching High School. When did Zijin switch school, how come I did not know, and why? Xiao Dongliang's face was as fierce as a tiger as he sensed something amiss. Was the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China a place that you could get in as you wished? Old Ding, hand me the passbook, I want to see. As he recalled that Ding Jiayi flashed a strange look when they argued because of the passbook the last time, he suddenly understood. See, see. What is there to see the passbook for? Ding Jiayi was so scared that she stuttered, and her tone was faint. Chapter 34 you must be Nan Nan you are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Chapter 34 You must be Nan Nan Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios, you aren't going to fetch it, right? Xiao Dongliang did not want to waste time with Ding Jiai. He always handed all the money to Ding Jiai. She was not the type to squander the family fortune. And so their savings had grown bit by bit. Xiao Dongliang entrusted everything under Ding Jiayi's charge, but that did not mean he was unaware of what was happening. He searched for the key, and went to the room to open the drawer. He took out the entire drawer and saw the passbook lying deep inside. Old Xiao, what are you doing? Ding Jiayi had a guilty look on her face. She feared that Xiao Dongliang would find out that there was nothing left in the passbook. At that thought she lunged at him, in a bid to take the passbook from him. Standing at 1.8 meters tall, if Xiao Dongliang did not give in, there was no way Ding Jiayi could have snatched it from him. Xiao Dongliang opened the passbook and had a look at the contents. Boiling with anger he bellowed, where's all the money? Xiao Dongliang's roar could be heard from outside. Xiao Zijin turned a shade wider, she was scared stiff. She was done for this time, there was no way to keep it under wraps anymore. Xiao Nan, what do you mean by this? That's our mom, how could you do this to her? Xiao Zijin pointed at Xiao Nan and started scolding her. If it had not been for Xiao Nan, father and mother would never quarrel. Father had always listened to mother. If father was to know that the money was spent on her, how would he think of her? That's right, she is my mom. She spent all the savings on you so as to enroll you in a good high school, but she wanted me to quit school and start working. That's really what a mom would do. Xiao Nan laughed sarcastically. How did you know? You did it on purpose. Xiao Nan had set this up to bring her mother and her down. The best way to hide a misdeed is not to commit it. The teachers at our school all knew your standard. Besides, they are all in the education sector. What do you think went through their mind when they heard that you went to the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China? Xiao Zijin stomped her foot, the teachers at junior high school were such blabbermouths. This was their family matter, it had nothing to do with others, why did they have to mention it in front of Xiao Nan? No wonder no amount of cajoling could get Xiao Nan to quit school and start working. Xiao Nan had known all along that her mother had spent such a huge sum of money on her. Dong Liang, are you at home? Just then, an elder's voice could be heard coming from outside Xiao's house. Xiao Nan paused, Grandpa Li. Xiao Zijin's countenance fell. This prominent elder rarely accepted their invitation to visit, why would he come at such an inopportune time today? Xiao Zijin was not worried that Xiao Dongliang and Ding Jiayi would disregard the situation and quarrel in front of Grandpa Li. It was that her mother had sought Grandpa Li's help to pull strings for Xiao Zijin to enroll in the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China. Her mother was lost for words when her father found out that she had spent all the savings. If her father was to know that mother asked Grandpa Li for help, he would be mad with anger. 
Xiao Dongliang's father passed away at an early age. It was Elder Li who brought him up. If not for Elder Li who supported and guided Xiao Dongliang because of his friendship with Xiao Dongliang's father, it would have been even more difficult for him. In order to have a second child, Xiao Dongliang gave up on the path that Elder Li paved for him. He could have had a bright future. He had also let his late father down. Ever since then, Xiao Dongliang had felt too ashamed to face Elder Li. Given his situation now, he could only lead a simple life. There was no way that he could repay the debt of gratitude that he owed Elder Li. Whenever Xiao Dongliang thought of Elder Li, he felt ashamed of himself. Yet Ding Jiayi asked Elder Li to help her to pull strings on the account that her late father dot in dot law once entrusted to his son under his care. Once Xiao Dongliang knew of this, Ding Jiayi would be in deep trouble. She would not be able to hold her head up high in front of him. Xiao Nan decided to set aside her quarrel with Ding Jiayi for now. Since her father had known about the passbook, he would definitely not allow Xiao Nan to quit school. Xiao Nan ran into their room and said, Dad, let's stop quarreling, Grandpa Li is here. Uncle Li. Xiao Dongliang tense demeanor slightly relaxed. In front of Xiao Nan, Ding Jiayi always looked as if someone had ruffled her feathers. But right now, she seemed to be like a quail who was scared stiff, cowering in fear. It was Ding Jiayi's who had squandered their savings. Just like Xiao Zijin, when Ding Jiayi heard that Elder Li was here, she was so frightened that she could not wait to find a hiding place. I will settle scores with you later on. Xiao Dongliang was so mad that he did not bother minding his words in front of their younger daughter. To think that Ding Jiayi had kept quiet about it after spending such a huge sum of money. He only found out about it after about a month. How daring was this woman? Xiao Dongliang patted the younger daughter on her head and without another look at Ding Jiayi, he led her out to welcome Elder Li. After seeing the passbook, Xiao Dongliang finally realized why his wife insisted that the younger daughter quit school and start working. Poor results. Led astray by the bad guys. All these were lies. She had spent all the savings on the elder daughter, yet she wanted the younger daughter to work in order to cover the loss. His wife was too biased towards his elder daughter. Xiao Zijin saw Xiao Dongliang walked out of the room, but she did not dare to walk up to him. She quickly went into the room to take a look at Ding Jiayi. Mom, it's really Grandpa Li who is here. What shall we do? If dad knows about that matter, he would surely beat me, and made me quit the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China. No, he won't. Ding Jiayi was just as scared but she was reluctant to admit. I know Elder Li's character. Elder Li knows how old Xiao's temper is, and that I hide the fact that I have been to see him from old Xiao. He won't speak of a word about this to your dad and affect our relationship. When Xiao Dongliang discharged from the army in order to have a second child, though Elder Li was disappointed, he had never scolded Xiao Dongliang. Ding Jiayi was fearless as she was confident that Elder Li would not want to affect the couple's relationship because of such a small matter. And judging from Elder Li's temper, if he has no inclination to help, he would reject her up front. But he would not mention this to Xiao Dongliang, regardless of whether it was a success or failure, lest the couple ended up in a quarrel. Uncle Li, what brings you here? Xiao Dongliang was very agitated when he saw Elder Li. He was ashamed to face Elder Li, but he also missed him dearly. Grandpa Li. Xiao Nan who was right besides Xiao Dongliang addressed Elder Li as well. Grandpa Li, have some tea. Xiao Zijin was more assured by her mother's words. Without another word, she came out with a cup of tea in her hand, hoping to perform well in front of Elder Li. Elder Li knew that Xiao Dongliang had two daughters, and they were not too far apart in age. Elder Li paused for a moment when he saw the two pretty young ladies. Xiao Xiao, you are really fortunate to have two daughters. Oh. Xiao Dongliang gave a vague smile. He used to think that way as well, but now he was not too sure. 
Grandpa Lee, please have some tea. Dad has always wanted to visit you, but felt sorry towards you. We never thought that Grandpa Lee would visit us. Dad, you are the junior, you should take the first step. Xiao Zijin knew of the situation between the two of them, and was clever with her words, painting a nice picture. Elder Li looked at Xiao Zijin with satisfaction. You are Nan Nan. Chapter 35 Boastful Dad You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 35 Boastful Dad Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Xiao Zijin finally had the opportunity to meet Elder Li, and he was all smiles when he saw her. She was so proud that she was well liked by everyone. She was about to say, yes, but her words were choked up in her throat. Why would Elder Li mention Xiao Nan as soon as he started to speak? Xiao Nan was always bad with her words, she was not likable like her. Why would Elder Li have mistaken her as Xiao Nan? Xiao Zijin's words were stifled in her throat and she ended up letting out a faint sound. Elder Li took it that she had acknowledged his questions. When he saw that this was the child that he was looking for, he became all the more amiable. Xiao Xiao, you have raised a good daughter. She really looked like the daughter of a soldier, full of righteousness. But Xiao Xiao, you should pay more attention to your children's health. Nan Nan, are you still in shock from the incident last time? Have you fall ill, and hence your voice sounds weird? Xiao's family were speechless. Xiao Zijin's, oh, was a slip of tongue. She tried to hold it in, but ended up going out of pitch. She was not admitting to having fallen sick. Uncle Li, you have the wrong person. This is my elder daughter Chiao Zijin, this is my younger daughter Chiao Nan. Nan Nan, you must have not met Uncle Li before, come and meet your grandpa Li. Chiao Dongliang might not know why Elder Li was here today, but he had the utmost respect for him. Grandpa Li. Chiao Nan addressed him politely. Xiao Nan was also puzzled as to why Elder Li would come to visit and to call her name up front. Of course, Xiao Nan was not angry at him for calling the wrong person. In fact she was happy. Xiao Zijin had made a fool of herself this time. Oh, you are Nan Nan, you are really pretty. Xiao Xiao, you have brought up a good daughter. Nan Nan might be quiet, but she is hardworking. Like us, she has the same down-dot-to-dot-earth attribute and mannerism of a soldier. Elder Li knew that he had got the wrong person. He gave a smile, not paying much attention to it. Ever since Chiao Dongliang was discharged from the army, he had never been to Elder Li's house. Elder Li knew that this matter had been weighing on Chiao Dongliang's mind. As for Elder Li, he was also disappointed in Chiao Dongliang. As a result, they had gradually lost touch. Elder Li had once carried Xiao Zijin when she was young. But he had never seen Xiao Nan since she was born. The two sisters looked alike, it was no wonder that Elder Li could not tell them apart. Xiao Nan could not help but smile at Elder Li's compliments. She found them familiar. Had he not said similar words when he mistook Xiao Zijin for Xiao Nan? This was the first time that Xiao Nan had seen Elder Li. He seemed to be a funny person to her. Xiao Dongliang was used to Elder Li's style. He smiled and said, Uncle Li, this younger daughter of mine is really a good daughter. She has always been good in her studies. Not only is she the vice class monitor in class, every year she is awarded the top three model students and outstanding class committee member. It's just that my wife is too careless to have burnt her certificates by mistake. At the mention of Chiao Nan, Chiao Dongliang turned into a boastful parent, pride was evident in his voice. Ever since he discharged from the army, Chiao Dongliang dared not face Elder Li. His biggest wish was that Elder Li was still healthy, that his two daughters would be successful and have good prospects. In that way, he could bring his daughters to Elder Li and tell him proudly, Elder Li, I did not make the wrong choice back then, I did not let your efforts down. He was not successful, but he had nurtured daughters who were even more successful than him. 
Elder Li, I am sure you don't know. Nan Nan is in the third year of junior high school. She did not do well for her Chinese and mathematics exams at the first day of school. Her Chinese teacher was very angry as she scored close to full marks for her essay but lost some marks in the component that required memorizing. She could have scored 99 points, but had 85 points instead. But luckily Nan Nan scored full marks for her English. She was the only one who scored full marks in her school. After finding out that Xiao Nan was not only the vice class monitor, but she also received awards for her good performance every year, Xiao Dongliang reflected on himself and began to pay more attention to her studies. This Wednesday Xiao Dongliang applied for an hour off from his workplace. He went to Xiao Nan's school and spoke with the teachers who taught the main subjects, asking about her studies. If he did not ask, he would not have known. After the session, he could not help but feel proud of his daughter. Every teacher who taught the younger daughter were full of praise for her. Even though it angered and pained Teacher Li to talk about the younger daughter's Chinese results, he could tell that it was because Teacher Li wanted Xiao Nan to do well. Xiao Dongliang could tell from the criticisms and praises that Teacher Li meant that if only Xiao Nan had done her revision, she would have scored at least 99 points for her Chinese exam this time. 99 points, and that was for Chinese. Xiao Dongliang never imagined that this result would be attainable. At least for the elder daughter, it was considered a good result to score 89 points for her junior high Chinese exams. Xiao Dongliang was burning with embarrassment at the teacher's underlying meaning. But he could not blame the younger daughter for telling the teacher that her mother sold the textbooks. After all, what his wife did had really affected the younger daughter's results. But one should not wash dirty linen in public. It was a total mess. Xiao Nan has the worst results this time. But it was the best that she could do. It made Xiao Dongliang hold his head up high in front of Elder Li. Dot, oh, really? Elder Li was somewhat surprised. He knew Xiao Dongliang well. He would not lie. Elder Li already had grandchildren and they were still in school. So he was aware that in junior high school, it was difficult to get 99 points or even 100 points for exams. 95 points would already be seen as an excellent score. As expected she was the industrious type. Elder Li looked at Xiao Nan with affection, as if she was his granddaughter. Elder Li was getting on in years. His only wish was that his grandchildren would study hard and be successful. So naturally, he had an affection for hard-working children like Xiao Nan. Besides, it was due to Xiao Nan's good upbringing and character that he had visited Xiao's house today. Xiao Xiao, do you know why I visited your house today? Xiao Dongliang paused for a moment and said, Is anything the matter, Uncle Li? I came on behalf of Zhu family to thank you and your family. Zhu family, Uncle Zhu's family. Xiao Dongliang was not close to Zhu family. Zhu family were in dot laws with Uncle Li. The son of Zhu family married Uncle Li's daughter. Zhu family and Li family all stayed at the quad. They were well dot matched in terms of social status. Zhu family was fairly well dot to dot do. Yes, it's your Uncle Zhu's family. Uncle Li became agitated. He took a few moments to calm down before he continued, You must have heard about what happened to my daughter. Elder Li, it has been years. You must take care of yourself. Chapter 36 Save the life you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 36 Save the life translator Atlas Studios editor Atlas Studios. At the mention of Uncle Li's daughter, Xiao Dongliang did not know how he could console him. Uncle Li had three sons and a daughter. He doted very much on the only daughter. Uncle Li wanted his daughter to find someone she loved and lead a happy life. He had no thoughts of establishing connections through her marriage. But Li Xu was lucky. It was by coincidence that she fell in love with the son of the Zhu family. Their relationship was going smoothly and they tied the knot in around a year's time and she was pregnant in less than three months' time. 
But what was heartbreaking was that Li Xu did not live to see the child. When she went into the labor, everything went smoothly. She had the baby through natural delivery. But no point one would have expected that after giving birth, she would have a hemorrhage. Li Xu's blood type was quite common, but it just so happened that the blood bank ran out of that particular blood type on that day. Her mother stayed behind to take care of the daughter. But her blood type did not match and so she could not donate her blood to her. When Elder Li and his three sons arrived, they were not in time to donate their blood to Li Xu. And so, only a few hours after she brought the baby into this world, Li Xu did not even get to take a glimpse of her child and she had passed away. Li Xu's death came as a blow to Li family and Zhu family. Elder Li even forbade everyone to speak of his pitiful daughter in front of him. Oh! Elder Li let out a long sigh. I am old, I am no longer as clear-minded as before. Now I always make mistakes and do silly things. Xiao Dongliang could not help but blush in embarrassment when he heard Elder Li's words. He was not as old as Elder Li. Yet he had done quite a lot of stupid things, in particular, matters regarding his younger daughter. Forget it, he did not want to talk about them, he would only be more frustrated about it. Xiao Xu was gone. No matter how heartbroken we are, Xiao Xu will never come back. Xiao Xu left us with the only son Bao Guo. She risked her life to have him. If he is gone, I... I wouldn't be able to face Xiao Xu when I died. Elder Li's eyes turned red. Has anything happened to Bao Guo? Xiao Dongliang realized something was wrong. I remembered Bao Guo is a year older than Nan Nan. He should be in secondary three now. Yes, he is in secondary three now. He is in the same school as Nan Nan. He is classmates with Nan Nan. They are all in the same class. Xiao Dongliang was surprised. He never thought that the maternal grandchild of Uncle Li would be in the same class as his younger daughter. Nan Nan, has something happened to your classmate? Zhu Baogua, my classmate. Xiao Nan was confused. Half a month had passed since school reopened. But she had no idea she had a classmate by the name of Zhu Baogua. Xiao Nan twitched her lips and did not know what to say. Among all my classmates, there isn't someone by the name of Zhu Baogua. But I haven't seen my desk mate since school reopened. She connected the dots and realized that her desk mate was the maternal grandchild of Elder Li. But what did this have to do with her? Before coming to their house, Elder Li had no idea how she had fared in her exams. There was no way that he was here to ask that she coached his grandson in his studies. It's fate. It's all fate. Elder Li was shocked as well. He never thought that his grandson would be related to Chiao Nan in so many ways. Nan Nan, on behalf of Li family and Zhu family, I sincerely thank you from the bottom of my heart for saving our Baogua. The situation was different for Li family, Elder Li had three sons and two grandchildren. But Zhu family only had one son, Zhu Qingqi. After Li Xu passed away, Zhu Qingqi never remarried. He left his family and stayed in the army all day long. Zhu Baoguo was the only grandson of the Zhu family. If anything happened to Zhu Baoguo, unless Zhu Qingqi was willing to remarry, there would be no point one to continue Zhu's family line. If something happened to Zhu Baoguo, Zhu family would be devastated. Save his life. Ding Jiayi was confused. It was rare that Elder Li visited them, and Zhu family was involved as well. Ding Jiayi was dying to have connections with these two prominent families, but she had never had the chance. Why would these two families have connections to their family? Why would Elder Li come all the way to Chiao's house to thank them? Nan Nan, do you want to tell them what happened or should I tell them? But I guess it's better that you tell them, I might not have all the details. Elder Li, I will do it. Xiao Nan was still confused. After pausing to think for a few moments, she asked, Is Zhu Baogua the person who was beaten up this Monday? After all, 
in her two lifetimes he was the only person that she had saved. You are really a good child. Elder Li beamed and nodded. Elder Li was not surprised that Xiao Nan did not know Zhu Baoguo. His only grandson had been dwindling his days away. He knew that his grandson never went to school. Whenever he was reminded of how outstanding his daughter was, and yet her son was such a good dot four dot nothing, he would feel sorry for his daughter and did not wish to see his grandson. Nan Nan, you mean you have saved someone's life before? Xiao Dongyang was shocked. Dad, do you remember what happened just now? Xiao Nan shot a glance at Xiao Zijin, hinting at the incident minutes ago where Xiao Zijin tried to smear her reputation. It has something to do with this. Xiao Dongliang understood at once. I usually stick to my daily routine, there's no way to be in touch with those people. It was on this Monday after I was done with my class duty, I saw a person surrounded by a bunch of gangsters and they were throwing punches at him. He fell flat on the ground from the beating. I went looking for the police. The police arrived and the gangsters ran off. The police then took the injured person to the hospital. Since then, she never meddled with these fights anymore. But she never thought that she had unwittingly saved someone so close to her. Why, is there something else? Elder Li noticed that something was amiss from Chiao Nan's tone and asked her to explain further. Nothing much, it's just a small misunderstanding. With that, Chiao Dongliang glared at Chiao Zijin secretly. The truth was finally out. Nan Nan had no contact with those gangsters and was not led astray by them. In fact, Nan Nan had saved Zhu family's son, Elder Li's biological maternal grandson. Misunderstanding. Elder Li did not probe further at Xiao Dongliang's words. Since if there was anything wrong, he would be able to, to find out himself. Xiao Xiao, all thanks to your Nan Nan, if not, I have no idea what would happen to my grandson. Elder Li, please do not stand on ceremony with us. Xiao Dongliang who was unaware of the real situation thought that Elder Li was being too polite. His younger daughter merely asked for help from others. They were all a bunch of teenagers. It was common to be engaged in small fights. No, they were my heartfelt words. Do you know why I only waited till today to visit when it was on Monday that Nan Nan saved Baogua? Elder Li's eyes turned teary at the mention of the danger his grandson faced. Those people were really ruthless. Two of Baogua's rib bones were broken. One rib bone almost pierced his lung. If not for Nan Nan, Baogua might be beaten to death by them. Fortunately he was sent to the hospital in time, otherwise he might die or become invalid. Everyone was stunned when they heard of Zhu Baogua's condition. Those people were too ruthless. Chapter 37 Self, Recommendation You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 37 Self, Recommendation Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios BVEC As Elder Lee spoke of his grandson's condition, she found everything to be so familiar. Two of the rib bones were broken, one rib bone almost pierced the lung. So in her previous lifetime, that person who was from the same quad, who became invalid from all those beatings, and died from the extreme pain as no dot one went to his help, was actually Zhu Baoguo. In her previous lifetime, Xiao Nan had already quit school and started working at this time. It was only when she came back then that she heard from others that someone from the quad was beaten to death. Even though the injured person was still alive, knowing that they had gotten themselves into trouble, those gangsters just ran off without him. A day has gone by the time he was discovered. His corpse had turned cold, and there was no chance of saving him. Because of this, Ding Jiayi started sending Xiao Zijin to school from then onwards. Xiao Nan had just reached home for barely a day before Ding Jiayi took all her pay and sent her off to work again. She did not even have time to ask about this matter in detail. So after her rebirth, in this lifetime Xiao Nan had no memory of this incident. 
She did not know that the person who had died in her previous lifetime was actually Elder Li's maternal grandson. Baogua sustained serious injuries and had just passed the critical stage. He had woken up but is still in recovery. He is still young, he should be able to regain his health by taking more tonics and healthy food. In the beginning, Zhu family and Li family were devastated and worried when they knew of Zhu Baogua's injuries. They did not have the time and the mood to find out who saved Zhu Baogua's life. It was only yesterday that Zhu Baogua woke up and was able to speak. The two families felt slightly at ease. It was then did they remember that they should thank the person who saved his life. Zhu family and Li family found the two police officers who sent Zhu Baogua to the hospital. They had wanted to thank them for saving Zhu Baogua's life. But like the soldiers, the police officers were honest and upright. They told the two families that it was a young lady from the quad who found Zhu Baogua and asked them for their help to save Zhu Baogua. So the person that the two families had to be grateful for was in fact this young lady. Zhu family and Li family asked around and finally found out that the person who saved Zhu Baogua was none other than Xiao Nan, Xiao Dongliang's daughter. Elder Li felt most comforted at this news. Elder Li had always felt sorry regarding Chao Dongliang's discharge from the army. Nobody would have known that it was Chao Dongliang's younger daughter who ended up saving his only grandson. Xiao Chiao, don't blame Uncle Li for taking such a long time to visit. Your daughter Nan Nan has saved Baogua, Li family and Zhu family owed your family a big favor, Elder Li said earnestly. Back then he helped and guided Chao Dongliang purely on account of his friendship with his father. But it was different now. Chao Nan saved Zhu Baogua's life. He owed Chao's family a huge debt of gratitude. From now on, Chao Dongliang no longer owed Li family anything. Rather, as Elder Li said, it was Li family and Zhu family who owed Chao family. Uncle Li, we are one big family. If it wasn't for you I wouldn't be what I am today. Nan Nan just did what she had to do. Regardless of whether it's Baoguo or not, when faced with such situation, Nan Nan would not turn a blind eye to it. Uncle Li, you do not have to worry about it. Xiao Dongliang stood straight and looked at Xiao Nan with pride and joy. Okay. Elder Li smiled. Xiao Qiao was never a person to request that someone return the favors. Xiao Qiao, you have taught your daughter well. It was all worth it. Xiao Dongliang discharged from the army due to Xiao Nan. Elder Li could not get over it for a long time. But he understood now and was fully supportive of his decisions. If Xiao Dongliang did not have a second child and had still served in the army, no matter how successful he was, there would have been no point one to save his grandson. Elder Li was just like everyone, hoping for the best for his family. He would naturally prefer the current situation now. Uncle Li, I find it all worthwhile as well. Xiao Dongliang said firmly. Xiao Zijin was all flustered. Elder Li was all praises for Xiao Nan, and from the way he looked at Xiao Nan, it was as if she was his real granddaughter. Xiao Nan merely asked for help. It was not her who took Zhu Baogua to the hospital. She did not deserve such credit. Xiao Zijin kept her thoughts to herself. She dared not speak of it in front of everyone else. With a look of worry on her face, Xiao Zijin asked, Grandpa Li, how is Brother Baogua now? We think it would be better for him to rest in the hospital for another half a month. He needs at least three months for the injuries to the bones and tendons to recover. Right now my biggest worry is Baogua's studies. Elder Li was worried but at the same time angry at his grandson. After the near-death experience, Elder Li knew that he had to face up to his pain inside and to take the matter of Zhu Baogua seriously. But Zhu Baogua did not put his effort into studying. He did not do well in the first two years of junior high school. If he had not played truant and messed with those gangsters, he would not have suffered such injuries. By the time he was discharged from the hospital, a quarter of the four-month-long semester would have passed. 
He could not just watch on helplessly while his grandson wasted his time away in junior high school, be content with a junior high certificate and join society, uneducated and without a proper degree. When his daughter was still around, she was very intelligent and quick to pick up new knowledge. She always did very well in her studies. Why would such an outstanding daughter give birth to a grandson who was such a good for nothing? At the thought of that, Elder Li gathered that it must be due to Zhu family. After all, Li family had good genes. Xiao Zijin had a bright idea and said, Grandpa Li, I just graduated from junior high school. Why don't I coach Bao Gua in his studies during my free time? Li family and Zhu family were prominent and established families. If she was on friendly terms with Zhu Baogua, Li family and Zhu family would help her along, there was no need for her to worry about her future. It would only take them a mere lift of the finger to arrange a good job for her. She did not need to have good results in order to have a bright future. This was only meant for people who came from poor background and who had no connections with the prominent people. If she had the connections, even if she was illiterate, she would still have a good job. I am of similar age to Baogua, we would definitely get along. Xiao Nan stared at Xiao Zijin incredulously. Where did her confidence come from? Wasn't she worried that she might be doing Baogua more harm than good? Ding Jiai found nothing wrong with Xiao Zijin's words. She thought it was a good idea. Uncle Li, our daughter Zijin is very patient and good with children. Baogua would love it to have an elder sister to take care of him. After all Zijin is in high school now, she would find it easy to teach junior high syllabus. Elder Li looked at Ding Jiai and smiled at Xiao Dongliang, Xiao Xiao, this is a good idea, but it's just that I thought Nan Nan is in the same class as Baogua. Furthermore they are deskmates. Can we ask Nan Nan to help Baogua instead? Chapter 38 Find a job you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 38 Find a job translator. Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Elder Li might not be able to tell Xiao Zijin and Xiao Nan apart, after all, he had not watched them grow up. But he still could tell the difference from the names. He remembered two months ago Ding Jiayi asked him for a favor. It seemed to concern Xiao Zijin. Elder Li shook his head while smiling. It was not difficult for Li family and Zhu family to find someone to coach Baogua in his studies. They had no problem at all hiring an accomplished teacher for him. But it was just that Baogua was very stubborn. Even if there were good teachers to teach him, he might not be willing to learn. Since Chiao Nan was desk mates with Baogua, she could check on him and look after him while they were in school. Besides, how could Xiao Zijin's results be comparable to Xiao Nan's results? No matter what, Xiao Nan was the best candidate. Of course, that's not a problem at all. Xiao Dongliang patted his thigh and agreed readily. It just so happens that Nan Nan has been revising her secondary 1 and 2 knowledge. She would have no trouble coaching Baoguo. The two of them can even supervise each other and help each other along the way. It was such a rare opportunity for Chiao Dongliang. Not only could he mend his relationship with Elder Li, he could also repay his debt of gratitude. Then it's settled. Xiao Chiao, if any problem arises in the future, you can still come to me for help. If it is beyond my limits, Zhu family will also try to come up with a way to help. Elder Li patted Xiao Dongliang on his shoulders. Actually, the Zhu family should be the ones to visit Xiao family. There were two reasons why Elder Li came instead. Firstly, Elder Li was acquaintances with Xiao family. Besides, Elder Li was the one who guided Xiao Dongliang. Secondly, the Zhu family was still in shock. They had been keeping vigil by Zhu Baogu's side. Hence they would have to trouble Elder Li to make the trip. Xiao Dongliang had a puzzled look on his face. What did Uncle Li mean when he said that he could still go to Elder Li if he ran into troubles? He had never asked for his help in the past. Xiao Dongliang was not the ungrateful sort. He was thankful for Elder Li's guidance and mentoring. 
he did not dream of asking favors from him. He always obeyed Elder Lee's words. He could not possibly have asked him for help. All right, it's late, I better head back. Looking at Xiao Dongliang's puzzled look, Elder had an, as expected, look on his face. Just as he expected, Xiao Xiao was so honest, there was no way that he could have asked him to do such a thing. Xiao Dongliang did not understand. But Ding Jai and Xiao Zijin knew it instantly. Ding Jai remembered that Xiao Dongliang had just blown his top over the passbook. If he was to know that not only had she spent all the savings on the elder daughter, she had also sought Elder Li's help to get Xiao Zijin into the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China, he would be furious. Ding Jai shivered in fright at the thought of that. Fortunately Elder Li did not mention anything about helping Xiao Zijin to enroll in the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China. Ding Jai finally breathed a sigh of relief when he indicated that he was leaving. Uncle Li, let me take you out. Xiao Dongliang stood up and walked Elder Li to the door before returning to the house. Ding, what did Uncle Li mean when he said that we could still ask him for help in future? Ding Jiayi raised her voice. What? What other meaning other than the literal meaning? Uncle. Uncle Li has forgiven us. He wants both of our families to keep in touch. We can also seek his help in the future. Nan Nan has saved his only grandson, he would definitely be thankful towards us. Is that so? Xiao Dongliang arched his eyebrows in suspicion. He still found it weird. If not, what could be the case? Not wanting Xiao Dongliang to probe further, Ding Jiayi quickly changed the topic. Old Xiao, is Xiao Nan really going to coach Zhu Baoguo? She is still in junior high school. You saw her results this time round. All her teachers said that she needs to work on her basic knowledge. If she was to tutor Zhu Baoguo, will she still have time for revision? Even if it was to repay Uncle Li, you shouldn't ask her to give up on her revision just to help Uncle Li's grandson. Xiao Zijin's eyes brightened at her mother's words. What do you want then? Xiao Dongliang dropped his voice, anger in his eyes. Ding Jiayi was way too happy to notice that. I think the suggestion just now was pretty good. Zijin can do the coaching, Biov it was such a good opportunity. How could she wasted such a chance on Xiao Nan? Zijin would naturally be the best choice. If Zijin was on close terms with Zhu Baogua and he acknowledged her as his sister, Zijin did not need to worry about her future anymore. As expected, her beloved daughter had Lady Luck smiling on her. Nan Nan scored full marks for her English and she was not capable of teaching Zhu Baogua. Yet Zijin who paid money to get into the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China could teach Zhu Baogua. Xiao Dongliang snorted. He did not mean to look down on his elder daughter. Ding Jiayi had let her imagination run wild. You heard Uncle Li's words just now, even if Zijin is willing to teach, Uncle Li would not allow it. That's it, stop messing around. You should consider Zijin's feelings as well. Xiao Dongliang was reminded of Elder Li's immediate rejection of Xiao Zijin's suggestion just now. He shook his head and said, Zijin, don't follow after your mom. Xiao Dongliang thought to himself, if he was his elder daughter, upon hearing what Uncle Li said, he would be so ashamed of himself. He had to admit, Xiao Zijin truly followed after him. When Uncle Li said that he would like Xiao Nan to coach his grandson instead, he saw Xiao Zijin's face turn red with embarrassment. But the benefits that came with tutoring Zhu Baoguo were too good to be missed. Even if she had been rejected once by Uncle Li, Xiao Zijin still hoped that she would be able to take on this tutoring work, and Xiao Nan would not stand to gain at all. On account of the fact that she saved Zhu Baogua's life, the Li family and Zhu family would definitely help Xiao Nan if she needed help in future. They were siblings, this time she should give up the chance for her. Xiao Nan should not be the one to have the upper hand at all times. Nan Nan, it was such a serious matter. You should have told us earlier and we would not have had the misunderstanding. 
If you had told us earlier, I would not have believed the rumors. Xiao Zijin said cynically. Xiao Nan laughed. Let Xiao Zijin know everything beforehand. If she told her beforehand, Xiao Zijin might have pretended to be her and taken all the credit. Besides, as she had said, she did not know the identity of the person she saved. Dad, now that we no longer have any savings, why not? Xiao Nan walked up to Xiao Dongliang's side and asked worriedly. Xiao Nan did not want to create trouble. But Ding Jai and Xiao Zijin kept on messing with her. In this lifetime Xiao Nan was no longer the good dot tempered girl that she used to be. No need. Xiao Dongliang grew mad at the mention of that. If there isn't enough money at home, it would not be your turn to earn money. Old Ding, our two daughters are in school now. They rarely spend time at home. From tomorrow onwards, you should look for a job. Regardless of how much you earn, you should make a monthly contribution as well. You. You are asking me to work at such an age. Ding Jiayi was stunned. Such an age. How old are you? I am much older than you and I am still working. Unless you are able to cover the loss, you have to find a job. Chapter 39 Dare Not Want It You Are Listening At Novel Full Audio Chapter 39 Dare Not Want It Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios with these words, Xiao Dongliang went straight back to his room without bothering about Ding Jiayi's reaction. Ding Jiayi's eyes welled up, tearing, she shouted at Xiao Nan, this is all your fault, are you satisfied now? You're a jinx, there's no peace at home every day because of you, did I somehow earn this in my previous life? Xiao Dongliang had insisted to see the passbook and found out about the matter because of Xiao Nan's words. At the thought of this, Ding Jiayi vented all her frustration on Xiao Nan. Nan Nan, this time you are really too much, this is our biological mom, how can you harm her like that? Xiao Zijin was still jealous that Xiao Nan had the opportunity to get close to Zhu Baogua and did her utmost to malign Xiao Nan. I am not sure if she is my biological mother, but I am certain that she is yours. Your grades are bad, she spent all the savings at home to let you continue your studies. My grades are never bad, yet she insisted that I quit school and work. Who is the one being owed to in the previous life, who is the one paying the debts? Xiao Nan could not tolerate this any further. She questioned Ding Jiayi and Xiao Zijin. Even if she really owed Ding Jiayi, she had repaid her enough in her previous life. She was eventually driven to the grave by her own mother, she had even given her life to Ding Jiayi. Mom, you often say that I'm not good. Let me ask you, sister is older than me, I do all the household chores at home, what does sister do? After all, I am the servant waiting on others while sister is the rich family's daughter, so you picked me up from the roads, right? Though I didn't say a word, it doesn't mean that I do not know. You are biased toward sister and spent all the money on her, yet you wanted to cajole me to work so that I can help you to mend this hole. Mom, in doing this, don't you feel guilty? You. Ding Jiayi was filled with guilt. You, what nonsense are you talking about? I, I asked you to work, it's really for your own good. Even if you do well in your studies, you may not be successful or be able to earn money in future. Doing well in school may not give you a successful future, so we might as well join the workforce earlier. Mom, then with sister's average grades that are neither here nor there, aren't you afraid that she will not be able to earn any money in future? Moreover, you dumped such a huge sum of money just to allow her to continue with these useless studies. Mom, I'm 15, not 5, do you think I believe what you said? Xiao Nan was furious yet amused by Ding Jiayi's words. Ding Jiayi actually said them, she was treating her like a 3 year old kid. Believe. Do I care if you believe me? With Xiao Nan's repeated pressurizing, Ding Jiayi was in a rage and simply spoke from her heart, let me tell you, you owe our family. If not for you, your dad would still be in the army, holding the position of a battalion commander. 
I didn't even mention myself, before I gave birth to you, I had a cradle dot to dot grave job. All these, aren't they all your fault? Without you, would our Chiao family have turned out like this? This is all because of you, a jinx. It is because of you that I am unable to lift my head up before others. Tell me, you caused so much harm, you're useless and only know how to waste the family's money. If I don't favor your sister, then should I favor a jinx like you? Xiao Nan was antagonized and she laughed. Don't make it sound so nice. Did I beg you to give birth to a second child? Did you willingly give up all that you mentioned earlier for the sake of me, your daughter? It is for your son. You can only blame your disappointing womb. After you gave up everything that you were proud of, in the end, you still gave birth to a money dot losing daughter. Right. Ding Jiai not only often called Xiao Nan wretched girl, but also money dot losing daughter. Mom, don't think that I don't know anything. When you pestered dad to have a second child and persuaded him to leave the army, you said you were willing to do so for the sake of your son. You gave up everything for a son but finally gave birth to me, can you blame me for this? I can't neither choose my gender nor my mom, it's the same reasoning. If there was a choice, she would not wish to be Ding Jiai's daughter, especially the younger daughter. You. How can you say that? Ding Jiai raised her hand and slapped Xiao Nan hard, until blood was dripping from the corner of Xiao Nan's mouth. Ding Jiai was always thinking how good things would have been if only she had not given birth to Xiao Nan. However, when she heard that the daughter whom she disliked also felt the same way, Ding Jiai was furious and humiliated. Old Ding, are you mad? Xiao Dongliang, who was feeling sullen in the bedroom, heard the argument between Ding Jiai and Xiao Nan getting worse, and he came out of the room. The first thing that he saw was Ding Jiai slapping Xiao Nan. Xiao Dongliang pulled Xiao Nan to his side. Didn't you give birth to Xiao Nan, how can you beat your own daughter like that? Did you not hear what she said earlier, she said I do not treat her as my daughter, does she treat me as her mom? She doesn't want me to be her mom. Ding Jiai yelled, her neck straight. You have to reflect on your behavior first. Nan Nan was not wrong in what she just said. Me leaving the army and your resignation, can we blame her for that? Blame yourself, blame me. But Nan Nan, what you just said was also too much. No matter what, she is your mother. How can you say such things to hurt your mom? Your mom has a strong temper, her words are as sharp as a knife, but she actually loves and dotes on you. After Chiao Dongliang disciplined Ding Jiai, he also reprimanded Chiao Nan. Both were biological mother and daughter but they argued as if they were enemies. Dotes on me, dad, is there a mother that will dote on me so much? Xiao Nan laughed. Earlier, her dad was angry, but he still harbored hopes of harmony and prosperity in the family. In this lifetime, she knew how to fight for herself and was not willing to give in. But her dad always wanted to to be the good guy, and play the middleman to the situation. However, between her and her mother, there was an inseparable knot in their hearts. It was no longer possible for them to get along with each other for a single day in this entire lifetime. Dot, Dad, I had a fever before school started, do you know what I heard when I was lying on the bed in the bedroom? I heard Mom telling Sister that I have a wretched life, cheap and tough, I won't die with a fever. As long as I was delayed in enrolling for school, they would cajole me into finding a job. Dad, you should know by now why Mom insisted that I find a job. If I work and earn money, will mom allow me to save a cent? It is not enough to dump all the family savings on my sister, she still wants me to work and support my sister's studies. Both are her daughters, why, is this how she dotes on me? Xiao Nan cried as she lamented. Her crying was more miserable than Ding Jiai. That day, my fever was so bad that I could not even get up. But my mother was so good, she bought a watermelon. Sister was hugging half of the watermelon and eating it with a spoon, all by herself. Sure, my mother really doted on me. I was sick and lying in bed, 
she threw away the medicine and refused to let me take it. I was so thirsty that I could not talk but there was no point one at home that would give me a single mouthful of water. Dad, can you tell me why mom dotes on me so much? Such a doting mom, who dares to want, who has the life to do so. Chapter 40 Did you do it you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 40 Did you do it translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios initially, although Ding Jiayi was not right, Xiao Dongliang felt that Xiao Nan's words about hoping that she was not Ding Jiayi's daughter were too harsh and heartless. However, after hearing what Xiao Nan said, Xiao Dongliang's lips were as though they sealed with glue. He could not open his mouth to defend Ding Jiayi. The matter regarding Xiao Nan's fever happened not more than two months ago. Xiao Dongliang could still remember how Xiao Nan retrieved the fever medicine, that had not expired, from the waste bin. That day, his wife insisted that she had given the younger daughter the fever medicine. But thereafter, she said the medicine was gone, expired and thrown away. Did his wife really give the younger daughter the fever medicine? Did they really finish the fever medicine? Or had the fever medicine expired? No, not at all. The more his wife tried to cover up the matter regarding the passbook, the wife insisted that the younger daughter quit school to work. Was she really doing this for the sake of the younger daughter or did she have an ulterior motive, would Xiao Dongliang not know? The more Xiao Nan said, the more awkward Xiao Dongliang's face looked. He breathed and snorted heavily. Dad, there is one matter that I have been keeping from you. I thought that was my hallucination, I too hoped that I was too sick to remember it correctly. The night that I was having fever, wasn't it raining heavily? I remembered that I had clearly closed the windows to prevent the rain from coming into the room, I clearly recalled that I was covered with my blanket when I slept. In the middle of the night, I vaguely felt that someone entered my room and walked to the windows. When I awoke in the morning, I had a fever, half the blanket was not only at the end of the bed, but also on the floor. Even the windows were opened. Dad, mom really dotes on me. Xiao Dongliang was shaken and his whole body shivered. He looked at his younger daughter with disbelief. Nan Nan, you, is what you said all true. You're talking nonsense. Ding Jiayi's eyes were red, and her face was even redder. She was angered by Xiao Nan. You're a heartless thing, when did I enter your room and open your windows? Apparently after she woke up that day, Zijin told her that Xiao Nan's condition did not seem right, her face was flushed and she looked uncomfortable. She only knew that Xiao Nan was having a fever after she entered Xiao Nan's room and touched her forehead. You, how can you malign me, I, I, I am your real mother. Old Xiao, we lived in the same room, you think about it. Did I wake up in the middle of the night that day? Ding Jiayi was afraid that Xiao Dongliang would believe Xiao Nan's lies. She quickly asked Xiao Dongliang to search his memory. This had happened almost two months ago. Xiao Dongliang could not remember so clearly. Xiao Dongliang was in the army and a light sleeper. Usually, when Ding Jiayi woke at night to use the restroom or do other things, Xiao Dongliang would certainly be aware. But this happened too long ago so Chao Dongliang did not have much recollection. As Chao Dongliang looked like he was racking his brains to recollect this, Ding Jiayi nearly fainted with anger. I didn't do it, I didn't do it. Your health is poor but you think that I opened the windows at night. That room of yours, am I happy to go in? Furthermore, I have to wake up in the middle of the night to do so. If I had really planned for this, I would not have left only half a tablet of fever medicine at home, to let you find it. Ding Jiayi's inappropriate words made everyone embarrassed and speechless. Xiao Dongliang did not know how to react. The wife's words had indirectly admitted that she had intentionally discarded the medicine, and the purpose was to let the younger daughter recover slowly so that she would miss the enrollment deadline. Regardless of whether the window was opened by his wife, the plot of quitting school and working was certainly her wife's doing. She had spent all the family savings for the elder daughter, 
yet she wanted the younger one to make up for this wrongdoing. Facing this, Chiao Dongliang was too ashamed to tell Chiao Nan that Ding Jiayi, her mother, could not possibly not love her. As for what Chiao Nan had said, this type of maternal love, who dares to want it? Mom, mom, forget it. Didn't Nan Nan say, she probably remembered wrongly. Perhaps Nan Nan was already feverish at that time and mistook her dreams for real. No matter what, Nan Nan was sick at that time. You you, you try to put yourself in her shoes. Xiao Zijin, who saw the anger of Ding Jiayi rising, held on to Ding Jiayi and did not want her to continue arguing with Xiao Nan. When Xiao Zijin said this, Xiao Nan opened her eyes and stared at Xiao Zijin. At this time, Xiao Zijin appeared to be sincere in persuading Ding Jiayi to stop making trouble, was that not strange? Xiao Zijin was never kind to her. After being pushed to the edge by Xiao Nan, Xiao Zijin guiltily turned sideways and hid behind Ding Jiayi. After which Xiao Zijin realized that the action would betray her. Lifting her waist, she stood out with a stiff face. Nan Nan, why are you looking at me like this? What do you think? Xiao Nan laughed, then she took a long breath. Till now, she had actually thought too lightly of Xiao Zijin. In the previous life, after Xiao Zijin committed adultery, she blamed her divorce entirely on Xiao Nan. When she knew she had uremia and needed a kidney, she wanted Xiao Nan's. Such a heartless woman, she had actually revealed her fox's tail at this time. That night, it was true that someone had entered her room. Not only had the person opened her windows, but they had also pulled away her blanket. However, that someone was not Ding Jiayi, it was Chiao Zijin. Dad, I can only say that I am certain that someone came into my room that night. If all of you think that I am dreaming, then continue to do so. Anyway, I didn't even have water to drink when I was feverish. My mother and sister were happily eating watermelon. They even treated fever medicine as expired ones by discarding them, insisting that I had eaten them. With this, you said my mom loves me, it's not surprising that I have that kind of dreams. Xiao Nan let out a huge sigh, she was badly shaken. Having said this, Xiao Nan did not wish to say anything else. She returned silently to her bedroom. The weekend that students always looked forward to had just begun, but Xiao Nan felt that she could not live through it. Was she really a child of the Xiao family? How she wished she could choose not to be. Xiao Nan's words were more formidable than 100 slaps, it stunned the rest of the three people on the spot simultaneously and set them thinking. Fight, fight, fight. Argue from day till night. Are you happy now, Nan Nan has become like that, is your heart at ease? I told Nan Nan that you love her, when I think of it now, I feel my face flushed with embarrassment. You have wasted all our family savings and tarnished the relationship with Nan Nan, are you satisfied now? I have said, from now onwards, you take care of Zijin's matters and I'll take care of Nan Nan's. If you dare to treat Nan Nan like this again, always shouting and threatening her to find a job to tidy up your mess, let me tell you, we won't have a life anymore. After numerous shocks and provocations, Xiao Dongliang could not smile even when he looked at Xiao Zijin who had been quite obedient and sensible all this while. He knew. Was the elder daughter not the source of all these matters? Zijin, let me ask you. Was it yours and mom's idea to study in the high school affiliated to Renmin University of China? Xiao Zijin did not expect that she would leave such a big loophole. That night, before she opened the windows, she had clearly called Nan Nan a few times and even pushed Nan Nan's shoulders to ensure that Nan Nan was sleeping like a log. She then daringly opened the windows and removed the blanket from Xiao Nan's body. She had not expected that Xiao Nan was actually pretending to be asleep. I, suddenly being questioned by Xiao Dongliang, Xiao Zijin was scared out of her wits. She stuttered for a long while and did not manage to respond to the question. Why are you shouting, didn't you just say, I will take care of Zijin's matters and you will take care of Xiao Nan's? This matter, you don't need to ask anymore. 
Ding Jiayi's face was serious. But I don't want you to misunderstand Zijin. This matter was decided by me. But the elder daughter mentioned it first. The elder daughter said that if she could get into a better high school, it would be easier to be admitted to a good university. Fine. Xiao Dongliang laughed. But this laugh gave Ding Jiayi and Xiao Zijin's goose pimples. Except for the school fees which we can negotiate, from now onwards, you take care of Zijin's living expenses alone. Anyway, the savings in the family have all been spent, whether you want to find a job, that's up to you. You spent 5,000 yuan because of Zijin, both are my daughters, it's not fair to let Nan Nan suffer because of this. So, my money, other than giving it to Nan Nan for living expenses, I will be saving it for her too. After he finished, Xiao Dongliang went back to his room again. He shut the door loudly with a slam. Ding Jiayi sadly slapped her thighs. It has come to this, how is she going to live? If old Xiao really was not going to care for Zijin anymore, if Ding Jiayi was going to find a job, how was Zijin going to survive? Ding Jiayi knew that Xiao Dongliang was serious this time. Even if he still cared about Xiao Zijin, he would not treat Xiao Zijin the same as before. The elder daughter was raised by her, Ding Jiayi knew that Xiao Zijin would not be able to endure this type of life. For the sake of her elder daughter, she must find a job. Ding Jiayi did not expect that after fighting for a few months, finally, not only did Xiao Nan not quit school, but also Ding Jiayi, who had been a housewife for 15 years, had to return to society and take a 9-to-5 job. There would not be a moment of leisure. The Chiao family had such a bad fight, all four family members were in terrible moods. Ding Jiayi was washing the dishes at the same time and crying. She was not in the mood to eat, but Chiao Dongliang had to go to work tomorrow, so regardless of whether Chiao Dongliang would eat, she had to prepare the food. I really owe it to that pair of father and daughter in my previous life. The two of them argued with her till they were red in the face and treated her like enemy, but she still had to wait on and feed the two of them. She must have sinned a lot. Mom, I'll help you. Xiao Zijin, who never did housework, for the first time, did not pay lip service. She rolled up her sleeves and started helping. Mom, is dad really going to care only about Nan Nan, and not bother about me anymore? Having said that, Xiao Zijin's eyes were red. She was clearly supposed to be her parents' favorite child. When she saw that her elder daughter had come, Ding Jiayi sniffed and wiped the corner of her eyes with her sleeves. You don't need to worry about this matter. But Zijin, regarding Xiao Nan's fever, did you do it dot?